So periodontal disease can cause calcification of the carotid arteries of the neck. I believe that 50% of heart attacks and strokes are triggered by oral pathogens, which is an amazing statistic. So we do know the correlation of the inflammation driven by periodontal disease does affect the lining and how the lining responds to this bacteria and the plaque. But as far as the calcification, I have to yield to you. I'm not aware of so calcification. Indirectly, I suppose, since it's a root cause, periodontal disease is a root cause, it can drive or help drive arterial disease disease, but it's not the periodontal disease that's actually causing the calcification in the arteries. When she does that cone beam, she serendipitously finds calcification in the arteries and says, hey, by the way, did you know you've got arterial disease as well? This actually brings up some of the discussion we were having before we started about, you know, what's the biggest issue? You know, Brad and Amy will often talk about how periodontal disease actually causes cardiovascular disease, and they make a good case for it. They have their own article with Dave Vigorous, where they talk about that. They often quote the article that you just quoted, Barb, where they actually went in and looked at the clots that caused heart attacks and found them, you know, they cultured them and found them, they had the same bacteria that people had. Some of those anaerobes, for example, yep. that you're talking about in those deep pockets. And those anaerobes are root plane resistant, which is why on high risk patients that we really like to hit them with a antibiotic while it's becoming systemic, hit them hard once so that we can kill those bacteria because if you're just using an ultrasonic and breaking up the biofilm, if you're not killing them, it's just almost creating more colonies of the anaerobes in the biome. So we like to use both periprotectrase with the oxygen to kill the anaerobes as well as systemic antibiotic if they're high risk. I tend to approach it from a slightly different perspective. You know, you can see some of these CDC headlines in places where, especially more 10 years ago, you don't see them as much anymore, where they talked about gum disease causing heart disease. One of the things that we tend to miss in this whole debate is what the number one cause of gum disease is, prediabetes and diabetes. Again, well hidden Jack the Ripper following most of us, and we just don't know it. It's causing oral health problems, it's causing cardiovascular disease. And to Brad and Amy's point, once you start getting there, clearly there's evidence the continued problem with oral health will continue to send you even further down that cardiovascular hole.